أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين We'll start uh, listen to by reciting all the Arabic alphabet uh, as requested by uh, one of the beloved and if we do that uh, in each class then it will help you memorize the uh, Arabic alphabet starting from the right corner and going to the left Alif Ba Ta Tha Jim Ha Kha Dal Dal Ra Zain Sin Sheen Sod Dod Ta, Da, Ain, Rin, Fa, Qaf, Kaf, Lam, Mim, Noon, Ha, Wow, Ya. Dan, Dan, Dan. Then, then, then. The first illustration shows us how the letter del or del appears when it is in the beginning of a word, in the middle of the word, and at the end of a word. Uh, starting from the right side, this is how it is written in the beginning of a word. Uh, the one in the middle, you can see the dash to the right because you are going to connect a letter before Dale. And uh, the last, uh, the third illustration shows the Dale at the end of a word. Notice that with Dale, you don't connect any letter after, but you can connect before it a letter. This is a grammar rule, and you just have to know it by practice. Uh, the illustration below shows how to write letter del starting from step one above the line, step two on the line, and step three is a little bit above the line. Again, letter del can be found in the body. Can you look at this picture of the ear and see letter del? If not, then you can see it in the next slide. So it could be that letter del symbolizes our uh, hearing sense or our inner sense more accurately. Because in fact, hearing or seeing uh, is only like the ear only uh, receives the vibrations on the air. But the real sense of hearing is really an intellectualized process that the brain does and to understand the words that being said or the sentence. Uh, but more importantly, uh, is also in, an intuitive reception. Uh, can let us comprehend the sounds, the beauty in the sounds, and through doing so, we can understand more about life and its mystical secret, as we will uh, learn more in the next slide. Allah says in the Quran, surely there is a reminder in that for whoever has a heart or listens attentively while he is witnessing. It shows 
that to develop our inner sense of hearing, we have to have our heart present, our consciousness. We have to listen attentively, be vigilant. While witnessing Allah's signs uh, in the universe, because when Allah says in that, there is a reminder, He means in the Holy Quran that is written words, but He also means the living Quran, the alive Quran, that is the whole universe. If we listen attentively and intuitively, then we can transform perception into contemplation and everyday experience into the euphony. Everyday experience can be a, a message from Allah, a revelation that we need to listen to, the message embedded within it, so that we can understand what we need to learn about ourselves and life. As I said before, everything, whether a form or an event or a relationship, is a catalyst for us uh, through which we can read, you know, the first revelation in the Quran to Prophet Muhammad was read. It didn't mean to read the holy book, that is the Quran, and memorize it. It also meant to read through the event, to read through the forms, to read the relationships, so that we can know the divine attributes that try to manifest and communicate into us to trying to be expressed for when we do that we feel fulfilled because we feel closer to the divine perfection so our inner sense of hearing transforms our uh, mere perception of the data we collect by our physical uh, senses to contemplation through which we can read more meanings and the more divine messages that can bring it, us closer to Allah and so closer to our uh, sense of contentment and fulfillment. Uh, our inner hearing transforms our daily experience into the euphony and the words and the movement of rituals into the infable reality of prayer. Like if we listen while we pray, and we'll talk about that uh, in the next slide, then we can transform the prayer into a reality. But usually we are distracted. We are distracted by the outer uh, voices, uh, by the outer sounds in the universe, and by our own noise, inside our mind, our thoughts, uh, that kind of uh, try to repeat itself uh, based on our uh, past experience and childhood uh, events and based on the identity or the false identity, identity that we uh, form for ourselves we form for ourselves a false identity based on our uh, fears, or desires, uh, based on our past experiences and misconceptions, ignorance and uh, that which covers the truth from us and we identify ourselves with, with that. We say this is me, this is uh, how I was born, this is my nature and we make these claims However, we have this potential to change, but we cannot change until we acknowledge our situation and uh, make the effort and strive and connect to the divine source that is, uh, can supply us with the tools by which we can change ourselves. We can open ourselves to all the divine qualities uh, that need to be known to us by experiencing them within and without ourselves. Uh, Prophet Muhammad said, were it not for the excess of your talking and the turmoil in your hearts, you would see what I see and hear what I hear. This means uh, that because of the condition of our hearts, the turmoil from the past, from the fears, from the desires, 
and uh, the thoughts, the inner talking, and also the outer voices that confuses us, we would reach Gnosis. Without all of that, we have the potential to reach the Gnosis that all prophets and saints reach it. And we can see what they saw and hear what they heard. That is why we see uh, uh, a Gnostic or a uh, knower like uh, Ibn Arabi, a Sufi teacher, uh, says to us uh, as he visualizes the divine talking to us, uh, saying, So I am the one reciting my book to the person praying through his tongue, and he is the one who is listening. For that is my nighttime conversation. And that servant is the one who is taking pleasure in my speaking. Such that if he stopped to ponder the meanings of what I am saying, he would be taken away from me by his thinking and reflection. What Ibn al-Arabi trying to tell us here is to go to the prayer with our heart present with our consciousness awakened, with focus, just as we are going in the night time intimate conversation with our beloved. Allah is our beloved, true beloved. So when we listen quietly to Him during our prayers, that will develop our uh, sense of hearing, inner hearing. It will polish all the dust and the rust that we accumulated that cover us the truth that cover i mean it covers the truth from us and prayer is supposed to polish us so we have to go to it almost with the attitude as if we are listening to music in the company of our beloved as if our beloved playing for us this music he's talking to us intimately uh, usually we go in the prayer with a different attitude. We go, uh, as a Sufi teacher put it, as if we are going to the supermarket. Oh Allah, I want this, oh I want that, I desire this, I desire that. But we have to go with the attitude that we are meeting our intimate beloved in a quiet time, listening to his music, to his speech, uh, talking to us, comforting us, and that uh, return us to our intuitive state that can perceive the truly real and uh, listen to the truth talking to us. Ibn Arabi continues to explain, for what is essential for the servant here is to listen attentively to me, means to the divine, to devote his hearing entirely to what I am saying until the point where I am actually the one in that reciting, as though I were reciting it to him and making him listen to it, until I am the one explaining my words to him, translating its inner meaning to him. That is my nocturnal conversing with the servant, so that he takes his knowing directly from me, not from his own thinking or consideration. You see, when you listen to music, for example, you, you don't have to analyze it intellectually to say, oh, this, is, um, uh, this note means sadness, this note means joy. No, you just listen to it and the, it transmits to you uh, what the composer felt at the moment he composed it. So you feel the joy or the sadness that the music conveys. In the same manner, you can listen to the Quran or to the prayer while you're reciting it. Actually, a more deeper level is that when you reach to a state that even your supplications come as an inspiration. When you make dua to Allah, when you supplicate and invoke Him, the words will start to come to you and then you are assured that the prayer is accepted because when Allah inspires you with the words to say, it means that He 
also is going to prove with these words that he is revealing. So we have to go to the prayer with our inner sense of hearing, that we are going to listen to the, to the beloved uh, through the prayer. So inner audition is analogous to thinking in a language. Like, uh, you know, when you talk uh, and express your feeling in a language, or within your thoughts even, it is the same. When you listen, you listen in the same manner uh, as intuitively letting the truly real express himself to you. We sing and move in our minds without ever having to sing and move physically. So we have to remember this. Ra, ra, ra. Zen. Zen, Zen. So again, we can see here how letter Ra or letter Zen appears in the beginning of a word, in the middle of a word, and at the end of a word. And like Dal and Zal, we do not connect letters after Ra and Zen, but we can connect letters before them. So far, we learned that we don't connect letters after Aleph, after Del, after Zel, after Ra, and after Zin. Uh, but we connect after Ba, Ta, Ta, Jim, Ha, and Ha. Uh, the illustration below shows you how to write letter Ra or letter Zin. Uh, you start by step one above the line. And then you go underneath the line and you go uh, uh, above but not to reach the line again. So uh, Zane will be written the, the same way but with dot on top. Can you figure out where is letter Ra and Zane could be related in the facial skeleton? If not, the next slide will show you. Okay, so what does it mean that letter Ra or this little bone has the shape of letter Ra or Zain? Uh, if you reflect, you try to find meaning in it. And that is the purpose, is to try to look at everything as meaningful. Uh, as a catalyst to bring for yourself uh, something that brings you closer to uh, the truly real. So bones in our facial skeleton uh, and the joints there are meant to make us do these facial expressions. And facial expression, expressions are actually universal in nature. We said that uh, facial expressions or body language in general are universal. For example, if we are joyful, we smile, we laugh. If we're sad, we cry or we, our tears come out. If we're shy, we have a blush. If we're angry, we have a certain look in our face and expression and our face turns red. If we are in a disaster, it, it, we can collapse our head. If we are thoughtful, we kind of make uh, certain gestures. If even uh, they say, if you are desiring someone, your eye dilated, these are universal uh, expression. And it shows our unity. Our spirits feel the same way. We share the feelings are the same, even though the outer experience can be different, but the inner is the same experience. Uh, we all experience the same thing. And that shows the homogeneity in our souls. 
and it shows that uh, there are also universal virtues that uh, can unite us more and body language are also universal. However, we can sometimes mask our body language and our facial expressions. Uh, and that could be good, but could sometimes be evil also. It depends on the intention and how you're using it. For example, if you mask your expression of sadness uh, by a smile because you are in front of a child, then that's a beautiful thing to do and maybe the wise and the most uh, effective or needed at the moment. Uh, but if you hide your smile while you're intending to hurt someone else, uh, then that is bad intention or used for uh, doing evil, and so uh, Allah will not approve of that. So, uh, to learn how to use our facial ex expressions in the best way uh, is something has to do with our spiritual growth. How to read people also, uh, people uh, facial expressions and body language can come with uh, purifying our intention and our intuition and by feeling a unity with people. When we feel unity with others, then we will be able to read their uh, facial expression and body language. And that information of the truly real can help us with them in a better way. You know, some psychologists say that uh, certain uh, body movement or expressions that we do can actually help us change our uh, struggle or our state to another. For example, you know, uh, they say universally uh, when you approve of something or affirm something or assure someone, you nod your head, uh, but if you uh, disapprove of something or want to negate or reject something, you really shake your head back, uh, to the right and to the left. So some psychologists say maybe if you are in a state of you need approval, you need to uh, affirm so something to yourself or your uh, self-esteem to empower it, maybe you can uh, approve of it by nodding your head. But I think that alone will not help unless you actually accompany it with uh, dua, with supplication, with, to invoke Allah names and to pray for him uh, and then you, you can add this movement to help yourself. Actually I found this ayah in the Quran that uh, alludes or refers to this uh, body movement that could be assuring when it is accompanied by the divine remembrance. It says, uh, Allah says to Prophet Musa when he gets rarefied as he shows the uh, uh, the fire bush talks and he also experienced his stick turning to snake, he was terrified, he was in a state of fear. Allah wanted to assure him, who, so he said to him, put your hand in your bosom, it will come forth white without a disease. Because he had a skin condition and that was a healing uh, effect to him. Uh, and Allah also adds, which is the part that caught my attention more, and to draw your hand close to your side to be free from fear. It is like uh, this movement has this effect of uh, assuring and affirming. It's part of our instinct uh, potential or uh, capacity that Allah gives us. And when we accompany that movement, with divine remembrance, it can reverse our negative feeling to an assuring and positive one. Those are the letters we learned today. Del, starting from the right corner. Del, Zel, Ra, Zin. I mixed these letters with the other letters we learned so we can see how they look 
when connected together. So let us uh, read these letters from the second line, starting from the right. It's ba, dal. Then ta, zal. Then fa, ra. Then jim, zin. The third line, starting from the right also. Alif, dal. Ha, Dal Kha Ra Dal Zin Please practice them over and over. Zal 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 Set 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 Zin, Zin, Al, Al, Se, Se, Ha, Ha. Del, del, Jim, Jim, Sin, 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 Shin, Shin. This is how letter scene is written in the beginning of a word, in the middle of a word, at the end of a word. The illustration below shows we start with step one above the line, we do the little semicircle, then we don't trace the pen. We go down again to do the next little semicircle, that's step two. Then we don't go, uh, the, we don't raise the pen, but we go to do step three, four, and five without raising the pen. So it is all written without raising the pen. And notice that uh, those uh, two semicircles are actually above the line, but the big curve or the big semicircle goes a little bit under the line and then it ends above the line. Letter sheen will be written exactly the same way, but you will add the three dots on top, which distinguish letter sheen from seen. Now, what is resemble letter seen in this uh, illustration of a human facial skeleton? Some say the letter scene resembles the teeth. Others say it resembles something else. Let us move to the next slide and we will see. Some say that letter scene or sheen resembles the shape of our ribs. This resemblance of letter seen and chain to the ribs made me 
Remember the prophet saying that woman is created out of man's rib, or actually Eve is created from Adam's rib. And some women take offense at that, uh, but there is nothing to be offended about. Some scholars explain, woman was made from the rib of man, she was not created from his head to top him, nor from his feet to be stepped upon. She was made from his side to be close to him, from beneath his arm to be protected by him, near his heart to be loved by him. Uh, this slide actually has a link to a YouTube song by Meher Zain that uh, I just do, thought to share with you because to make the, the teaching a little light and to make uh, you enjoy the class, uh, of course, if you like to hear it, you can click on the link or you can pass to the next uh, slide so we can um, discuss more about that uh, uh, saying that woman is created out of man's rib, or which exists also in Christianity, I believe. So you know, uh, man uh, carries the X and Y chromosomes, but women carry only the XX chromosomes. So uh, if Allah uses the man as the agent, to determine the new embryo that results from the union between a man and a woman, then if he takes the Y from the man and the X from the woman, the result will be a male embryo. But if he takes the X from the man and the X from the woman, uh, there will be a female embryo. That means that because the man has the X and Y, then the gender comes from him, kind of because the XX cannot produce a Y. However, it, because uh, Eve is created out of Adam, it was compensated that also the male child comes out of the womb of a woman. Uh, so it means they come from each other exactly as the Quran says. The ayah below refers to the fact that it is out of uh, the man's sperm that the gender is produced. It says, was he not a notfa or a jamet, bored force, then he became a halaqa or a clinging cloth that Allah shaped and fashioned. And of it, or I put him, which means the sperm of the man, he made the male and female. Uh, because every noun, as we explained, is either a masculine or feminine, and here it refers to the masculine noun that refers to the man's sperm, and this actually proves the scientific fact that the gender is produced through the, the contribution of the man. Uh, but as I said before, there is another ayah that says we are created from one another. Uh, just as women uh, were created from man's rib originally, uh, or from these chromosomes, uh, then she holds the embryo in her womb, and without that, the embryo will not come to life. So we come from one another, which means uh, we are equal. It shows the equality of the gender, and uh, how they, much they should appreciate each other. And uh, uh, as spouses need to be garment to each other, to protect each other, and to love each other, and to cherish each other. These are the letters we learned so far. Starting from the right side, first line, Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, Jim, Ha, Kha. The second line, starting from the right, Dal, Dal, Ra, Zain, Sin, Sheen.